So I would like to first thank, uh, give my thanks on behalf of Dallas Islamic Center to our friends at Methodist Church here uh, for three reasons. First, for hosting us here, opening up their facility and their hearts to us. So this is the first thing. Second, for sponsoring this dinner. And uh, third, this one is a little bit longer than the first two. Uh, we have a saying in Turkish. Uh, we say, which means a guest eats whatever is offered, not whatever she hopes for. <laughs> so, uh, but today it's different. So our friends from uh, Methodist Church allowed us to pick our own food and the ingredients. So we, we, ate, we ate what we hoped for. So thank you for that. <laughs> so we are here having dinner together as neighbors. Uh, there is a definition for neighbor in Islamic uh, literature. They say, first definition is neighbor is the one who lives right next to your house. Second definition says neighbor is the one who lives in the houses, 40 houses in each direction to your house. So people living in 40 houses on your right, left, front and back are all your neighbors. And uh, there is a third definition, more comprehensive one. It says neighbor is Neighbors are the ones who hear the same azan, same call for prayer. Which means the whole people in a town or a city might be regarded as neighbors. Now you just heard azan call for prayer from Mr. Hamidullah. I would suggest him to make this call for prayer azan on air at KERA. So the whole Dallas Fort Worth Denton area will be neighbors. <laughs> our friends from uh, Methodist Church last May, they uh, came to our Abraham Stable program and uh, uh, Dr. Kaplan made a speech then. We really enjoyed the, uh, that, the, that dinner, that, that lunch actually, with you guys together and Dr. Kaplan's speech. I remember three uh, uh, things from his speech. He said there are three, he talked about three principles. First was uh, do no harm. Second was do good, and the third was stay in love with God. Am I right? So I think this dinner is about all these three wonderful principles. So uh, I would uh, invite uh, Dr. Kaplan to give us uh, a speech and uh, please uh, 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 give him a welcome, a warm welcoming. Uh, Connie, 
and maybe others from Custer Road. Uh, there are other congregations I know. I may not have um, met you when you came in. I also know that we have one Presbyterian pastor here tonight, uh, Dale Patterson from uh, Hatbury uh, uh, Presbyterian Church, and there may be others. So um, we need to realize that uh, the spirit that we have tonight is a spirit that is uh, very ecumenical and one that we hope will spread from this uh, place and from this initiative of Abraham's Table into this celebration of Ramadan um, that we share together tonight uh, throughout this city, as you have already invited us to think this way. Yes. I do want to uh, say that perhaps many of us uh, Christians in getting ready for tonight have Googled Ramadan. <laughs> So that we come here a little more prepared about uh, 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 a practice that we've known a little something about, but not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. And so tonight, um, I think that we'll leave here, those of us who are gathering from the Christian faith, with more information, but more than that, more inspiration about what this night is all about. The ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Ramadan, or as our Turkish sisters and brothers who are here tonight call Ramadan, Ramaz, Ramazan, Ramazan. Okay, let's have applause here. Ramadan. <laughs> and it's a time of patience and spirituality and humility and submissiveness to God is celebrated. For we in the Christian faith, it. Um, parallels to some degree our understanding of Lent and some of the times when we become more introspective and more prayerful in our uh, practice of 40 days um, leading up to our holy time of, um, of Holy Week and, and Easter. It's also a time that um, our Islamic sisters and brothers are extra sensitive to the revelations of God. Remember the first verses of the Quran that were given to the Prophet Muhammad. I wonder what God is revealing to us tonight. If this is a time of Ramadan and a time that we are specially sensitive to God, what God is revealing to us, the revelations of God, what is God revealing to us tonight? Has God been revealing something to you tonight as you sat around the table with people you may not have known before you came here tonight? Has God been revealing something to you as you've made your preparations for being here? Perhaps have, have, have prayed about, you know, what is this going to mean for me? Maybe you are anxious. Maybe you um, uh, were a little fearful. Maybe, uh, maybe you were a, a little surprised that this night has, has, has been so comfortable. Uh, all of us in this room, many of us strangers, one to another before we can walk. Is God revealing to us tonight? My wife Tammy and I, uh, a few days ago, were privileged to go to South Africa to the World Methodist Conference. This is a conference that we have every five years that brings together people in our tradition, some 50 million uh, Methodists uh, from all over the world. Now, not that many people gather. <laughs> Only a couple of thousand representatives. But at the opening ceremony, uh, I was pleased, Tammy pointed uh, out, that the person who was leading the interpretation was a man named Kalaba Chali from, uh, uh, from Zambia, who also was a pastor in our church, and it was so good to go all the way across the world to see somebody who we knew from right here in this church, one whom we've loved, and one who brought a, a great deal of, um, of uh, growth to our African fellowship here. But one of the first presenters to the World Methodist Conference was a person who came to us um, whose name was Walde El Sadi, who was the General Secretary of the African Muslim League. Here all of these representatives had come from all over the world and one of the first presentations was made by one of our Muslim brothers. And he made the warmest invitation, full of hospitality, uplifting the fact that it was, yes, Ramadan, the beginning of Ramadan. And, and I thought as he was speaking, I think Tammy did too, that when we get back to Dallas, guess what? 
we're going to be able to celebrate with our sisters and brothers together at Lover's Life. He made one comment in that, um, in, in that speech that what we celebrate in Ramadan is really the goodness of humanity that God has blessed us with and welcomed us to the city of Durban and welcomed us in such a way that we all stood to our feet after he got through speaking and applauded. And, and I thought, here we are in a Christian gathering conference, a Methodist Christian gathering conference, and we've just been addressed by a brother from the Islamic faith, and we're standing to our feet in applause because the hospitality of God has brought us together. What is God revealing to us? I want to remind all of us who are in this room, especially those of us of the Christian tradition, that when it was largely in Macedonia and in Turkey where Christians learned that God's love is bigger than just for Jews and just for those who are part of the inner circle. But God's love was broader than that. And the Christian faith spread to the Gentile world. The last three weeks in this congregation, we've been celebrating in worship and reading from the book of Ephesus, or Ephesians, from that town of Ephesus, which is, of course, in Turkey. As you perhaps walked into this room, you saw a mission statement that we embrace here at Lover's Lane as part of our purpose, that we want to love all people, all people into relationship with Jesus. And, and whether we acknowledged it before, now, or, or not, we are doing just that. We're loving all people into relationship with Jesus. For to be in relationship with another Christian is to be in relationship with with that Christian's Lord. And my guess is that all of you who gathered here from the Dallas Islamic <coughs> Center could say something very similar. You could say that your community is loving us into relationship with Allah and to the understanding of Muhammad. For we gathered here tonight and as you've noticed, I hope you've noticed, I've certainly noticed the prayers that we have heard, the beautiful call to prayer that we experienced, the way that we have respected one another around these tables. It's been a night already full of love. Not shifting away from our own faith practices, but embracing them fully and bringing them to the table. I think we have something very special very special edition. And I want to say to you, as the Imam of this congregation, thank you so very much for letting Allah lead you and your congregation into such an act of hospitality that has absolutely been contagious. Thank you.